Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. The title of today's Bible study is, Is the Devil in Your Church? Now, this morning when I got up, the Lord brought to my mind about spiritualism and this new age movement that's happening in the Church of Jesus Christ today, where people are in their ignorance, opening themselves up to demonic possession, thinking that they're receiving the Holy Spirit. People shaken with the Kundalini spirit, because that's what it really is, that same evil spirit that spiritual practice over in India, these people shaking and possessed and falling on the ground and people feeling drunk and screaming like animals and running around like fools and thinking that this is receiving the Holy Spirit. Being misled by these new age gurus and these so-called churches. So you see in the series of little clips that I took from those different videos, what's happening in the Church of Jesus Christ today. You got these new age guru leaders bringing in false doctrine and misleading the misinformed. The reason why a lot of people can be so easily deceived is because they don't know our Father's word and they trust these people to tell them the truth. And you should never do that. you got to study the word for yourself. So in those clips, you saw people shaking and falling on the ground. You're seeing the guy... Uh, <laughs> running around like a fool and the women running around like a fool and they truly believe this is receiving the Holy Spirit. So we got to do our part to try to educate them. So let's get into the Word of God. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, the Bible prophesied, starting at verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit, talking about God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, speaketh expressly that in the latter times, that's the last days of this earth age before Jesus returns. That's what that phrase, the latter times, refers to. So, in the last days before Jesus returns, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines, which means teachings of devils. And that's exactly what you saw in those clips. Verse 2 says, speaking lies in hypocrisy. You see the guru leaders telling you that this is the Holy Spirit. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That means they are deceived themselves. Their conscience has been seared with a hot iron. That means Satan has thoroughly convinced them that what they're teaching is correct. Verse 3 says, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So it gives us an example of some of the false teachings that they would have people believe. Like in the Catholic cult, that big, huge Christian cult, they have a teaching that the priests cannot be married. And there's nothing in the Bible that supports that nonsense. And that's why I believe a lot of the priests end up being perverts and creeps, child molesters. And then also, you will find in some of these churches where people have been misled to teach that you can't eat no meat. And that, that is not true. You can eat the meats that the Bible says are clean 
in Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy 14. I got a Bible study on that particular subject. I think the title of it is What Can Christians Eat? So that's why you got to know the Bible for yourself, okay? Because these seducing spirits teaching these doctrines of devils are busy all over the world deceiving people. And because of their work, you see these type of characteristics in people in these last days. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul wrote, starting at verse 1, This know also that in the last days, that's the last days before Jesus returns to set up his kingdom on this earth and restore order in this world. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. That word perilous means dangerous. And we are living in that time of the end. Look, verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. In other words, they're self-centered individuals. They could care less about what God says in the Holy Word, the Bible, or what anybody else has to say. It's all about self. Lovers of their own selves. Covetous, that means desiring things that belong to other people instead of working and getting their own. Boasters, you know what that is. Proud, blasphemers. You saw a lot of those gurus are blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Telling people that feeling like they're drunk and running around like an idiot is the Holy Spirit. They're blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Disobedient to parents, we see that. Unthankful, unholy. Verse 3, without natural affection, without natural feelings. You know, this world has been desensitized to violence. It's no big deal when we see some person get blown away on the internet or on TV. It's just like a walk in the park. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent. That means they have no self-control. Fierce despisers of those that are good. Four, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That's why a lot of the young people who don't know anything about Christ are very easily deceived by these new age guru teachers in the church because they tell them the Holy Ghost is going to make them feel drunk. And that's what most of these uh, deceived young people want to do anyway, is get high. So they, oh yeah, I put it on me, man. I want to feel it. Woo! <laughs> lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Five, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, but denying the power of godliness from such turn away, Paul writes. And so that's exactly what you saw in those clips, and that's what's happening in the world today. Satan, the devil, tried to destroy the church of Jesus Christ, but when he saw that he couldn't destroy it, he joined it. And so he has corrupted it from the inside out. And I hate to say it, but it's rare that you're going to find a true church of Jesus Christ these days. It's a rare thing. I'm not saying there aren't any out there. But I'm talking about the whole church now. You will find churches where you will have people in there who are still holding on to the faith. But I'm talking about the whole organization. That's a rare thing. That's why you got to have a personal relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the only way you're going to really get to know him is to study his word. It's okay to study with somebody like me because I put the scriptures right on the screen in front of your face and try to get you into the word. But there's no substitute for starting to read and learn the Bible for yourself. So my goal is hopefully to drive you into our Father's Word so you can know what the contents of the Bible says. And so when Satan comes with these seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, you'll see right through it. I know a young man who belongs to one of these so-called New Age churches. He was telling me that the Holy Ghost could come upon you and make you bark like a dog or meow like a cat a crawl on the ground like a snake. And I'm like, really? Where's that in the Bible? And then he got mad at me because he knows it's not in the Bible. And it's just sad that people want to worship God 
their way instead of finding out what God says. If they knew their Bible, they would stay away from spiritualism and anything that looks like it. They would stay away from this foolishness that they see, holy laughter and, and, and being drunk in the spirit. None of those things are biblical terms. As a matter of fact, the Bible warns you to stay away from all things like that in the Old and New Testament. In Deuteronomy 18, starting at verse 9, the Bible says, When thou, which means you, when you are coming to the land which the Lord thy God, the Lord your God, giveth thee, or gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Now, he was talking to Israel, but we can learn from what he told Israel. He said, don't do like those unsaved nations around you. Verse 10, he says, there shall not be found among you, Israel, anyone that makes his son or daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. He says, these are the type of things I don't want you doing. They were sacrificing their sons and daughters to a false god named Molech, these unsaved nations. And they were involved in all kinds of spiritualism, astrology, astronomy. They were channeling spiritual mediums, witches and warlocks. That's the male witch. You're supposed to stay away from that stuff. Verse 11, he says, or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits. Those are people who go to a seance and think they're talking to their dead loved one. No, you are channeling with a familiar spirit through a spiritual medium, through that person who's a servant of the devil that the demons are coming and telling stuff and they have nothing but lies they're telling them and then they tell them to you. So you're supposed to stay away from a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Twelve. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. The word abomination means something detestable, something disgusting. It's immoral. You're supposed to stay away from these things. And he says, and because of these abominations, the Lord, your God, does drive them out from before you. 13. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. You are to be spiritually mature, in other words, with the Lord your God. 14. For these nations which you shall possess, hearken or listen unto observers of times, those who look up at the stars and things and tell you what's coming. Oh, I can tell you what's coming. Let me see. <laughs> and unto diviners or to diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not suffered you to do so. So the Bible clearly tells us to stay away from that mess. And if you see this video and you are convicted by God's spirit and you belong to one of these new age churches where they allowed this Kundalini spirit to come in there, you need to get out of there. That's right. Run. Don't ever go back. Because that place is saturated with demons. And only through the power of God can you break free from that control and stay free. Now, this is why I do what I do. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 says, Preach the word. Be instant. In season. Out of season. Reprove, that means when you uh, correct somebody. Reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He says in verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, sound teaching, in other words. And that time has already come. We're living in that time. But after their own lust, after their own desires, Shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears? Verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that's exactly what's going on. That's one of the reasons the devil can get a lot of young people and people to join up with these new age guru led churches. Because people are looking for something that fits their fancy. They don't want to 
get into our Father's Word because God tells you all the stuff that you like just about, you got to stop doing. Fornication, adultery, drugs, lying, getting drunk, hating people, being jealous, being envious, all that stuff got to go because without holiness, none of us are going to see God. So they'll go and find a church that suits their fancy and tell them they can just keep doing whatever they want to do. Oh, that's perfect for me. Yeah. But it's not going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. You can join up with any church you want to join up with and believe anything you want to believe. But when judgment day come, you will not enter into God's kingdom. You're going to be judged for all your sins and you're going to be cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. So how do we avoid this, Minister Porter? This is how you avoid it. You have to use the Bible to educate yourself about the things of God. You have to do that. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. That word inspiration, it means God breathed. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's why you got to know the word. 17, that the man of God or woman of God may be perfect. That word means spiritually mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So there's no getting around that. When you see people in these assemblies shaking like an idiot, and letting demons get in them and, and foaming at the mouth and falling on the ground and some fruitcake standing over them, saying, that's the Holy Ghost right there, look at that. That's, that's, that's the Holy Spirit right there. <laughs> that's it. If you knew your Bible, you would know that that's not the Holy Ghost and you would get out of there. So that's why you got to know the Bible for yourself. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman, and I always add woman, that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So rightly dividing means to follow the subject and get the understanding, and God will enlighten you. He will help you do that through his spirit, because they'll tell you that the Kundalini spirit, they got it out of the Bible where people are walking around shaking like idiots and falling out on the ground and like they're drunk. And they'll take you to Acts chapter 2 and say, See? See, the Bible says when the Spirit came upon them, they was, at, they was all drunk. And the Bible does not say that. When you read Acts chapter 2, the Bible says when the Spirit of God came upon them at Pentecost, they were supernaturally given the ability to speak languages that they didn't learn in school. And the people were looking at him like, wow, how, how, wait a minute, aren't all these people from Galilee? Well, how do they know all the languages that we grew up in? How is that possible? Then it, scripture says in Acts chapter 2 that some people said, well, these people are all drunk. Nowhere in Acts chapter 2 does it say they were walking around like a bunch of drunks and their speech was slurred and they were sliding down their mouth and peeing themselves and falling on the ground like they were drunk when the Holy Ghost came upon them. The scriptures say the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to supernaturally speak languages that they didn't learn in school. That's why you have to study to show yourself to prove unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed or work woman rightly dividing the word of truth. And in closing, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. I want you to get this, saints. Paul wrote there under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, for Timothy's sake and for our sake, meditate upon these things. What things? The word of God. Okay? Meditate upon these things. That means not just reading it, but think about what the Lord has had written for us to learn because these are the instructions that you and I are to live by. Let it revolve around in your mind. Meditate upon these things, the word of God. Give thyself wholly to them. Give yourself completely to the studying of our Father's word. Why? That thy profiting may appear to all. You're going to profit from learning God's word and hiding it in your heart and putting it into practice. The Lord is going to be pleased with you when you live according to his word and he's going to bless you right where you are. This is what Paul is talking about. 
He says in verse 16, take heed unto thyself. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, to the instructions of God. Continue in them. Stay with the word of God. For in doing this, the apostle says, thou or you shall both save thyself. You're going to save yourself and them that hear thee and those that hear you. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. PayPal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630 4414563 Now here are non financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry I need your prayer saints pray for minister porter and pray for this ministry and share the bible study videos if you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry Share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, Porter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section.